Hi, I'd like to spend a few minutes to show you the Equator Room Analysis and Automated Room Response Compensation software. Tab 1 displays which version is currently on your computer. The latest version can be downloaded from our website. Tab 2 is System Configuration. Select which speaker is connected to USB. In our setup, it's the right speaker. It also shows which speaker group we are scanning. Hit the Scan for Speakers button and the software interrogates the system searching for the speakers networked together within the group. We have a pair of Q8s with a USB cable running from our computer to the right speaker. We have a CAT5 network cable connected between the two speakers. There are the two speakers displayed. Speaker group names lets us title our networked groups. We'll call speaker group 1 Stereo Q8. If you go to the top, Stereo Q8 shows up in the drop-down menu. That is the group that we are monitoring and testing today. To the bottom right, we have a distance units drop-down which allows you to see values in either feet or meters. If you're in Europe, you're likely to select meters. To the right is speaker LED brightness which gives you control over the brightness of the LEDs on the speakers themselves. Tab 3 is the audio configuration tab. On the left side, we assign our microphone input device. Any audio device connected to your computer will automatically show up in the drop-down menu. We're using a Digidesign MBOX 2 Pro. We have our microphone plugged into input channel 1. The software automatically enables and displays the detected Q-Series model. We then have to manually select the output device and channel for the left speaker. In this case, it's a Digidesign MBOX 2 Pro and channel 1. We then have to do the same for the right speaker, Digidesign and Channel 2. The test buttons to the right are used to send a noise blast to each speaker to properly set your levels. Hit the test button and adjust your mic pre to get as much signal as you can before clipping. Adjust your device output level so that our meter registers well into the green. If you happen to have a dB meter placed at the test mic position, around 90 dB seems optimum for the Q8s, a little less for the larger models. Select tab 4 labeled Automatic RRC and enter your longest room dimension. Ours is 15 feet. If you had meters selected in tab 2, this would read 4.6 meters. Decide how many seconds it will take you to clear the room before the RRC test is to begin. You can run the test for as many positions as you want in the room. Our mic is placed where the engineer sits and has been positioned vertically at ear level. You can defeat the announce test, but we'll keep it on. We chose 3 seconds to clear the room. You'll see a 3 second countdown which gives people in the room time to get completely out of the way of the speakers and microphone. Now we hit the Run RRC button. Equator Automated Acoustic Test will commence in 5 seconds. Stand clear. Test complete. With the test completed, the speakers have been programmed with compensation data gathered by the microphone and calculated by the RRC software. This data is specific to the microphone location. Tab 5, Selected Speakers, shows this compensation. With the left speaker selected, visually the compensation is displayed at the bottom left. The actual compensation values can be seen to the right. There's a phase invert switch that reverses the phase of the selected speaker. Select the right speaker and its compensation data is displayed. 
Tab 6 displays detected secondary reflections from any reflective surface, including consoles or computer screens. It's displayed in both milliseconds and size relative to the initial incident wave. The reflection threshold setting determines the sensitivity of the compensation. Reducing the threshold to minus 12 dB will correct for less reflections. Minus 24 dB is the default setting. Selecting the left speaker shows you that the reflections detected are different. The All Speakers tab, tab 7, allows you to view all of the automated compensation values for each speaker. If you have the patience and wherewithal to determine your own in-depth voicings, you have the ability to make any change within any cell. Individual voicings can be named, saved, and recalled at any time from within tab 9. You also have the ability to bypass the room compensation altogether. Tab 8 opens up the Tone Contour panel. Tone Contour gives you tone control for your fronts, your surrounds, your subwoofers, or all. This allows you to have additional voicing control that can work independent of the automated compensation. A hip-hop producer, for instance, might want to add extra low end. Double-clicking the center of any knob takes you back to the default value. You also have the ability to bypass the Tone Contour for the fronts, the subs, the surrounds, or all. The volume control is completely independent of the tone controls. Tab 9 allows you to save, load, and recall RMC files. If you hit the Save As button, you create a new RMC file. In this case, we'll name it Mix Position. It now programs the speakers. On the right, there are five quick access presets. Clicking on a folder, you can select any RMC file and load it into the selected quick access location. Pressing the select button to the left of a quick access preset will program the speakers with that file. In this case, we reprogram the speakers with all controls flat. The compare button allows you to AB between your current settings and the last RMC file programmed into your speakers. You always have the ability to mute or solo any speaker in the network, and you can bypass room corrections, secondary reflections, and tone contour filters for all speakers, as well as mute all speakers. Well, that's how easy it is to use this software.